So today I am showing you a uh, pouring technique that I invented. It's called the blind swirl. Okay, so this is how we layer our cup for the um, swirl technique. Um, well, the blind swirl technique. Um, so uh, first I put in uh, a metallic um for this, in this instance, I put first uh, copper, then white, and then alternate, you know, black, white, black, white, black, white. Now, this one, I'm making the um, layers of black thicker than the ones of white. And then on the next one, I'll make the layers of white thicker than the layers of, of black. And I'll use a different metallic on that one. I'm going to use a gold. Um, again, this is just a layer. Uh, layer. This is just a technique I came up with. Um, and it, it, and I did it um, kind of a, as an accident. But then I really liked the, the effects that I did. So I decided to... Um, Play around with it and so yeah um so the 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 best uh, effects that i get with this technique is by using just two colors a dark and a light and then like a third that i mean the third is not really necessary i just put it in just for um to break up just the black and white or I've done it with purple and white um, monotony, but it, like I said, you know, that metallic is not really necessary. Um, nonetheless, I did put it in for this one. So I layer my first cup. Now I'm layering my second cup. And like I said, with this one, I started with gold, then white, then black, and so on until I run out of room in the cup. Um, for this, uh, because I'm using a 24 by 30 inch uh, canvas I only really need like around 20 well 25 ish um, ounces of paint uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, layer the full cups um, just so that I have plenty of, of paint since i um, trying to show you this new technique um, in here I um, the white hat does have uh, a little of the pearl medium which will unfortunately um, crack or fracture I think that's more of the accurate description it fractures uh, some of the solid paints and um, yeah but um, but I think it's still gonna be nice hey guys so today I'm inventing a new technique I currently I call it blind swirl swirl why because basically I do a swirl okay so in my cup I poured alternating layers of black and white so in this cup I have thicker layers of black and this one I have thicker layers of white and in this one I've also the dogs are having some issues outside. Sorry about that. Um, so this one has a little bit of copper. This one has a little bit of gold. So I'm going to, um, the trickiest part of the swirl technique is um, identifying which cup you wanna do first. So because I'm not much into like super dark stuff, I think I'm gonna do the black, the concentrated black. First, I'll do a swirl of that and then I'll go back with the white one in the opposite direction. So here we go. So this is a 24 by 30 canvas. So 32 ounces of paint is more than enough. So we should be fine. Okay, so I layer my cup and so I'm gonna start from the outside of the canvas coming in and around and around and around. It's probably pretty good. I 
think I still have more here, but we'll do that. So then the other one is the opposite direction. So I'll start here and I'll go outside. Okay. So. Uh, It's funny how the, the cup is, has a mind of its own. He it wants to move. He <laughs> wants to slip from my hand. Okay. I have my finger in there. So now, uh, now I'm just going to pour the extra one in here because... I don't want to waste any paint. So if you watched uh, Fairy Kisses, uh, you'll recall that my heat gun was not working, but somehow I was able to get it to work. So um, I used it here. Now what I'm doing is just basically tilting um, the composition just enough to join uh, the different swirls together. Um, so that it begins to move as a whole and yeah so so that's just the point right now is just getting it to um just covering the empty spaces of the canvas so here we bring in our heat gun again just to try to pop some of those air bubbles by um swirling this paint i think i'm also aerating the paint so there's a ton of bubbles which can be a spectacular thing because uh, those bubbles can mean cells um so yeah but obviously my little heat gun um is not enough to pop all the air bubbles i still need to invest on a better heat gun and so that's probably what i'm going to end up doing but um for now, I have this one. I'm calling it Haley. Haley the heat gun. Haley because it sounds small and the heat gun is super small. Okay, so even though I had a hard time putting on my gloves, uh, we're ready to tilt. So uh, according to the Massey Art Studio, it's tilting time. So basically here, um, as always, when we're tilting, um, the reason why we're doing it slowly in the beginning is because we just want to open up some of the stripes and some of the colors um, to see what's underneath and to get a, a sense of the overall composition and see what makes sense for us to drop off the canvas and what we want to keep. So obviously this, this black, I love the black with all the little specks of white because that's going to turn into a little cells. Uh, now, so I'm going to try to keep some of it, but there's so much of it so that I don't necessarily have to worry about it. I am a little scared about this, um, these white patches, but um, because there's paint underneath, I think um, we'll see some translucent areas and they'll look more like... Um, like snow or like fog or um, in some instances, if um, when we get the cells inside um, and it's white, sometimes it looks like a snow leopard. Um, so, or like a snow owl. Have, I don't know if you've ever seen a snow owl. It's so super pretty. Um, so yeah, so here um, I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to keep most of this white because um, uh, the white uh, has a tendency of of looking transparent or uh, translucent and then we see some really interesting things um, inside of it so yeah so I, so I'll try to keep as much of that as possible um, and the black also looks really interesting but um, I, I, I don't like um, you know the dark as much
so as we tilt um, this canvas here you'll note um, how shiny uh, the piece looks and that is due to the fact that I use Liquitex um, gloss medium uh, and it makes the paintings look super shiny but um, it is kind of an expensive um, you know uh, medium but I think it's worth it it makes such a huge difference um, yeah because if when I've not added the gloss medium then my uh, paintings look a little more matte like a matte finish even though the paint is supposed to be um, gloss finish or glossy paint so yeah um, so if you if you if you're able to afford it I definitely recommend that using the gloss medium uh, Liquitex gloss medium um, now Mina Villegas she uses uh, varnish the Liquitex varnish uh, in her in her pores and and hers look a lot more shiny uh, but the the varnish um, is like twice or maybe four times as as much as the gloss medium so uh, you know I prefer to go with a gloss medium because I can't afford <laughs> the varnish to put it into the um, the pour itself obviously I use the varnish after um, to seal um, the paint but um, I don't put it in the the pour itself um, okay so here uh, back to here so uh, at this point I want to keep as much of these colors as possible um, and unfortunately I think or fortunately for individuals who do not have my limitations I think um, this technique can be like amazing especially because um, y'all will be able to control more the um, the uh, the composition as you tilt uh, for me it's a little harder because I, I don't see it um, at the time that I am um, tilting it um, I mean I see it through the monitor you know I think you know based on how much I use this monitor uh, when I'm doing this um, I think it would have been like an awesome robotics surgeon you know or like a you know surgeon that uses robotic arms because yeah I mean I remember training on it um, briefly for um, an assignment I had for my prof what is a profession about physiology class and um yeah so i remember having a hard not hard a hard time but it, it took some time to adjust to um like looking at the monitor but reacting with your arms on what you were looking at because sometimes um the what you saw was backwards of what you were how you were supposed to do it and it's hard to explain but yeah so it was it took a, a bit to just get adjusted to it um and i i was thinking oh you know wow you know someone i has to like really train to make sure that they do this correctly and stuff but then you know when the accident happened and i i lost my ability to have that dream <laughs> uh, be fulfilled then I started to do this um, this art as therapy um, and um, I ended up um, utilizing this monitor um, to help me with pretty much everything and even taking classes I use the monitor so that I can um, figure out like basic sentences and stuff like that um, and then also obviously I I fully take advantage of voiceover um, on all the Apple and Mac products 
I'm so thankful to Apple for um, all, all their accessibility programs that they instituted. It's super helpful. Even just having Siri on my phone is perfect because I can, like for example, I can ask it to read me the last text I received. I can um, also, my smartphone, you know, I can, um, I have uh, apps that tell me like, the different bills what denomination they are i can also i also have one that um tells me about you know the the colors and stuff like that now i have um pretty good well i had more but um i still have pretty good color contrast but there are some colors that i don't see as they appear to other people um but so i have an app that shows that um indicates that to me so yeah there's a lot of apps for people now that have uh, limitations and yeah so we're super um, lucky that we're living in this era and i think as uh, more and more engineers um, or more people with limitations become engineers um, more um, accessibility products are being built for because I remember when I just lost my eyesight there were so many different products there's like that you know different ideas that I had about you know we need this we need that and stuff like that and so yeah I think I was able to um contribute uh, quite a bit to my team uh, at the university because um yeah there's so just so many different ideas that I had because I had never you know I've always thought about uh, people with special needs and I've always thought that I was supportive and if there were people in my class I try to help and stuff like that but you know you you, you don't really know until you know you know you're the one who has the limitations and um, some stuff that uh, drive you nuts and then other stuff that just like I actually I literally had one professor throw an eraser at me because he wanted to make sure that I couldn't see and of course he hit me <laughs> um I was so mad I would cried I, I ran out crying um now I can laugh about it but yeah no I, I, yeah some of my professors were like super mean um you know like like my organic chemistry professor um my first semester you know I got A's and he was just like besides himself and like praising how my good works and stuff like that and then um when the accident happened I went back the next semester I was already enrolled in his class and he didn't he didn't even want to adjust um you know how I uh, took my exams he's, he's like well that's not my responsibility you know my job is just to teach you know it's like I'm just asking you know for this little modification it's not even like anyway <laughs> I'm digressing here so anyways back to tilting and having art be a an awesome therapy um and the reason why I really love it is because well in high school I had finished all my required classes my um in the the eleventh grade um and but there there was one class that I could only take during senior year and so um the rest of those classes my senior year were all electives so I took piano I took art I took flower arrangement <laughs> just you know random things and also I was I was doing cheer but in that art class I remember like really loving it and you know, I was just in it for one semester and um, the art department nominated and gave me um, a scholarship to the Parson Art Institute um, in Los Angeles. And, you know, there were so many other kids in the school that really loved art and were, you know, they've been doing art forever, but somehow um, they decided to give it to me. And... I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, great. And I actually took, um, during the summer, I took one class, uh, which was life drawing. And of course, I was 
some naive, uh, <laughs> super Catholic um, teenager. And then here I am in an art uh, class at the Art Institute doing life drawing. So <laughs> you can imagine. But I wasn't the only naive one. Uh, there was, um, so the scholarship was one per school um, in uh, Los Angeles. And no, it wasn't one per school because they, there were just like 16 of us. But yeah, I'm not sure how they divided it up. But anyways, but the young ladies from Roosevelt High School also were like giggling and stuff like that. So we were all like naive young ladies. Um, anyhow, um, so, you know, I was excited to uh, take that class, but I had already accepted, um, you know, my... Uh, admittance to UC Berkeley and so I ended up going to UC Berkeley and didn't go back to the Art Institute but um I still loved art and you know I followed the advice of my math instructor he said you know go to Berkeley graduate from there and then if you still want to do art you can always go back to art whereas if you go do art it's, you won't be guaranteed that Berkeley will be there waiting for you. So, <laughs> so I went to Berkeley, graduated, and had a lovely um, experience uh, working with the Girl Scouts. I retired from the Girl Scouts and went back to school to do engineering. And that's when my accident happened. So, anyway, I you know I love the fact that I did have. Um, some base in art to like or like I had an idea what art was like and um, how it made me feel when I did it so now it um, it is uh, the best uh, therapy with my um, walk down memory lane I finished my my tilting now I am using Haley the heat gun to try to pop as many air bubbles as possible and um, also I think the heat also helps it to begin to set so that way you know uh, the composition stays um, more together I guess but um, yeah so Haley is just not cutting it for these all these air bubbles so I am gonna have to um, invest in something that's a little more industrial i think i went with this heat gun because um jilla cube um she uses her, she calls it her wonder wand i think and i mean and she uses it and and it works well for her but it's probably because she can see whereas for me it's a little harder um or maybe she has a different type but anyways this looks similar to that so that's why i bought it but I think I need a, a more industrial um, kind of heat gun. So, um, and it like, should probably be like an air gun. All right, so this is the close up. Um, lots and lots of black and white gradient. Um, we have stripes. We have cells, we have fog, like snow on a mountain, look at all that snow, and then the gold rush, <laughs> it is really interesting. And as I mentioned earlier, um, this white did have some of the pearl, pearl medium, um, and so I knew it was going to fracture um, the solid uh, blobs of paint, if you will, or blocks of paint. But um, I really do in enjoy seeing um, how the fracturing. Um, almost produces individualized sort of, sort of like pigments of paint and they're scattered about so they look 
they they give a feel of like fog or like snow falling onto like um, pavement. Hey, I hope that you'll give the blind swirl a try. I think it can produce some really amazing effects for you. So um, thank you so much for coming to watch this video. We'll see you at the next one.